Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you three different deployment methods that Kong supports. Let's get started. First of all, let me open my terminal and then my browser. This is the article I'm going to focus on. Before we start, I would like to give you a little bit background information. Kong can be installed on different platforms. You can install it on a VM, you can install it with Docker or Kubernetes. Con supports all of them. But when we are talking about deployment methods, there are three different deployment methods. The first one, which is the classic deployment method, user need to create a database and use admin API to create all the con entities. The second deployment method is the deepless deployment. As the name suggested, there is no database, so users need to create um, all their con entities on a YAML file and when con starts, it will read all the information needed and load all the entities in memory. So the benefit of using Dibbles is it's very easy to start and very easy to scale as well. The third deployment method is like a combination of the first two. So you need to have at least two con instances. The first con instance will be connected to a database and users will be using admin API to create all the con entities and store it in a database. The second con instances will be the data plane, which is similar to DBLIS deployment. After user create con entities on the control plane, the control plane will push all the configurations to data planes automatically. Your clients will be consuming all your API through the data planes only. It will never touch the control plane. Because the data plane does not have a database connected and it receives the configuration automatically, it is very easy to scale when you have a lot of um, traffic. Let me give you some demos. The first step, I'm going to create a Docker network. I'm going to run all my containers inside that network. The first deployment method I'm going to show you is the class deployment. So we need to have a database first. I'm using Postgres in this case. After the database is created, I'm going to do the bootstrapping. So what bootstrapping does is it will create the necessary tables inside the Postgres container we just created. Once the bootstrapping is done, we can start our con instances. Just like that. Now we can test. All right, as you can see, it's running and the version is 2.5, which is the latest version. Um, if you don't want to run um, these commands separately, I'm also prepare a Docker Compose file for you to start. So let me just quickly stop all these containers first and we can download this Docker Compose file. Okay, let's download that file. Let me just start. Okay, so now we can test. No problem. As you can see, it's running fine. So we can um, create a simple service and round just for testing purposes. And URL, I'm going to use HTTP as our off string and create a path to access the upstream. Okay, so let's go to demo. All right, it's working. So this is how you deploy con in the classic deployment method. You will need to use admin API to create your con entities. Let's move on to the next one, which is the DBLIS deployment. Let me just kill these Docker containers first. Okay. For DBLIS deployment, there are two ways of passing all the configurations to con. The first way is the users need to write their configurations before starting con. Uh, here is an example. 
I've got one service, which is called demo service, and it's got a path demo, and I'm enabling a key off plugin on this um, service. I'm also having a, a consumer called demo user, and it's got an API key called demo key. Now we just need to save it to a file. No problem. Now we can start con and con will load all the entities from on these files when it starts. Let's try. Okay, so we should be able to just go to the demo route, as you can see here, and we will get no API key found in request because we've got a key of plugin here. Let me just pass in a API key, demo key, no problem, it's running. So this is one of the methods you can um, start con in DBless mode. Um, so you just design what you want on the file, pass into con and tell con where to find this file and once con started it has everything in it if you need to change something on your uh, yaml file um, you can also use the slash config endpoint to push the file to con let me show you let's say i don't want to have a demo route i want this name to be test let's save it and then we can just push that to con. Now, when we run this again, there will be no route match because it's test now, right? And API key, demo key. Yep, so it's changed now, changed to test endpoint. So deep list mode is very easy to start and very easy to config. Um, but the downside is once your port is restarted, um, if you use this method, all the configuration will be gone. So it's better to start like this. The last method I want to show you is the hybrid deployment. Let me just kill all the containers first. Should be only one. Okay. And let's just make some certificate first. Why do we need to have a certificate? The reason for that is all the communication between the control plane and data plane are encrypted with mutual TLS. So we need a certificate for that. Uh, let's just create a new folder called cert and then use this command to generate our cluster cert and key. That's done. And then we can start our car control plane. So the control plane need to have access to the database. Um, as I did demonstrate in the classic deployment, I'm using Postgres. And then the pull strap. Next, I'm going to start the control plane. As you can see, the control plane only has um, 8001 port uh, opened, so we can only use admin API with control plane. Once that's done, let's test it. No problem, it's running. Let's create a few um, services first. Okay, and let's start data plane. As you can see, the data plane has the port 8000. So I can consume whatever I created on the control plane, on data plane. It is still waiting for the control plane to push the conf configurations to data plane. It's ready now, as you can see here. So if I um, enable a key auth to uh, on the con control plane, I will not be able to consume it, as you can see here. So that's how you deploy hybrid mode. I've also prepared a Docker Compose file for you. So let's do that. OK. 
Okay, let's download this Docker Compose file. And and it, you need to review this file before you run it. It's a database, database migration, bootstrapping, um, control plane, data plane. And because I've already created our certificates, I can run it directly. But if you uh, uh, you haven't got your self signed certificate yet, you need to go to the step one to create your certificate and key. Let's run it. Okay, so let's have a look. All right, no problem. So 8000 and 8001 are working. Just quickly do a service. And then a route. And we should be expecting the data place has all, everything. Yep, as you can see, the connection is pretty quick. Right after I created my route, the data plane already got it. We also have an endpoint to see the data plane. So this is currently there is only one connected to control plane. So this is how you use the hybrid mode. As you can see, I'm using very, very simple setups here. If you need some um, advanced setups, you can go to um, the official documentation. It has all the configurations here. Uh, for example, if you need the SSL certificate, you can find the related parameters here. You just need to add the parameters to your environment and then it will be working. All right, that's all I want to show you today. If you've got any suggestions or if you have any questions, please leave your comments down below. I will try to make some contents for that. Thank you for watching. See you next time.